Hey guys, today I want to show you 11 tips that instantly improve your Python code. I show a lot of best practices that make your code much cleaner and more Pythonic. If you find these tips helpful, please, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. This helps me more than you think. So let's jump right into it. Number one, iterate with enumerate instead of range length. If you need to iterate over a list and need to track both the index and the current item, most people would use the range length syntax. So in this example, we want to iterate over a list, check if the current item is negative and set the value in our list to zero in this case. While this syntax works, it's much nicer to use the built-in enumerate function here. This will return both the current index and the current item as a tuple, so we can directly check the value here and also access the item with the index. Number two, use list comprehension instead of raw for loops. Let's say we want to create a list with certain values, in this case a list with all the squared numbers between zero and nine. The tedious way would be to create an empty list, then use a for loop to do the iteration, do our calculation and append the new result to the list. So a simpler way and also a faster way to do this is list comprehension. Here we only need one line to achieve the same thing and list comprehension can be really powerful and even include if statements. If you want to learn more about the syntax and good use cases, I have a whole tutorial about list comprehension that I will link in the description. Number three, sort complex iterables with the built-in sorted method. If you need to sort some iterables, so for example a list, a tuple or a dictionary, you don't need to implement the sorting algorithm yourself. You can just use the built-in sorted function. This will automatically sort the numbers in ascending order and returns a new list. So if you want to have the result in descending order, you can just use the argument reverse equals true. As I said, this works on any iterable. So here, for example, we can also use a tuple, but note that the result will be a list. Now let's say we have a complex iterable. So here we have a list and inside the list we have dictionaries. And then we want to sort the list according to the age in the dictionary. For this we can also use the sorted function and then pass in the key argument that should be used for sorting. So the key must be a function, so here we can use a lambda and use a one line function that returns the age. Number 4. Store unique values with sets. If you have a list with multiple values and need to have only unique values, a nice trick is to convert our list to a set like so. A set is an unordered collection data type that has no duplicate elements. So in this case, it removes all the duplicate elements. If you know right away that you want unique elements, like here the prime numbers, you can create a set with curly braces. This allows Python to make some optimizations and it also has some handy methods for calculating the intersections and differences between two sets. Number five save memory with generators. In tip number two I showed you list comprehension, but a list is not always the best choice. So let's say we have a very large list, so here we have 10,000 items and we want to calculate the sum over all the items. We can of course do this with a list, but we might get in trouble with the memory. So this is a perfect example where we can use generators instead. Similar to list comprehension, we can use generator comprehension that has the same syntax but using parentheses instead of square brackets. A generator computes our elements lazily, so it produces only one item at a time and only when asked for it. So if we calculate the sum over this generator, we see that we get the same correct result. But now let's inspect the size of both the list and the generator with a built-in sys.getSizeOf method. For the list we get almost 90,000 bytes and for the generator we will only get 128 bytes because it only generates one item at a time. So this can make a huge difference when working with large data, so it's always good to keep the generator in mind. 
Number six, define default values in dictionaries with .get and .set default. Let's say we have a dictionary with different keys like the item and the price of the item. At some point in our code, we want to get the count of the items and we assume that this key is also contained in the dictionary. When we simply try to access the key, this will crash our code and raise a key error. So a better way is to use the .get method on the dictionary. This will also return the value for the key, but it will not raise a key error if the key is not available. Instead, it returns a default value in this case. And if we don't specify the default, it will simply return none. If you want to ask our dictionary for the count, and we also want to update the dictionary and put in the count if it's not available, we can use the dot set default method. This returns the default value that we specified and the next time we check the dictionary, this count key is now available in our dictionary. Number seven, count hashable objects with collections.counter. If you need to count the number of elements in your list, there is a very handy tool in the collections module that does exactly this. You just need to import the counter from the collections module and then create your counter object with your list as argument. If we print this, then for each item in our list, we see the according number of items that this item appears. And it's also already sorted with the most common item being in front. This is much nicer than to calculate it on our own. If you want to get the count for a certain item, we can simply access this item and it will return the corresponding count. If the item is not included, then it returns zero. It also has a very handy method to return the most common items, which, no surprise, is called most underscore common. We can specify if you just want the very most common item or also the second most common item and so on by passing in a number. Note that this will return a list of tuples. Each tuple has the value as first item and the count as second item. So if we just want to have the value of the very most common item, we first call the most common method with argument one. We then access index zero in our list. This returns the first tuple. And then again, we access index zero to get the value. Number eight, format strings with F strings. This is new since Python 3.6 and in my opinion is the best way to format a string now. We just have to write an F before our string and then inside the string we can use curly braces and access variables. I think this is much simpler and more concise compared to the old formatting rules and it's also faster. What's also nice is that we can write expressions in the braces that are evaluated at runtime. So here, for example, we want to print the squared number of our variable i. Then we can simply write this operation in our f string. Number nine, concatenate strings with dot join. Let's say we have a list with different strings and we want to combine all elements to one string separated by a space between each word. The bad way is to do it like this. Define an empty string, then iterate over the list and then append the word and the space to the string. As you should know, a string is an immutable element. So here we have to create new strings each time. This code can be very slow for large lists. So you should immediately forget this and a much better, much faster and also much more concise way is to use the dot join method. This combines all the elements into one string and uses the string in the beginning as a separator. So here we use a string with only a space. If, for example, we were to use a comma here, then the final string has a comma between each word. So yeah, this syntax is the recommended way to combine a list of strings into one string. Number 10, merge dictionaries with a double asterisk syntax. This syntax is new since Python 3.5. If we have two dictionaries and want to merge them into one dictionary, we can use curly braces and double asterisks for both dictionaries. So here dictionary one has a name and an age and dictionary two also has the name and then the city. If we merge these two dictionaries with this concise syntax, then our final dictionary has all three keys in it. 
Number 11. Simplify if statements with if x in list instead of checking each item separately. Let's say we have a list with main colors red, green and blue. And somewhere in our code we have a new variable that contains some color. So here c equals red. Then we want to check if this is a color from our main colors. We could of course check this against each item in our list like so. But this can become very cumbersome and we can easily make mistakes. For example, if we have a typo here for red. Much simpler and much better is to use the syntax if x in list. So here if c in colors. This will return the correct result as well. Okay, so these are all the tips I wanted to show you. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few new things. If you have any other good tips, please let me know in the comments and see you next time. Bye.